Hello everyone. Welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. Just so grateful to have you with me today again. Pray that the Lord is blessing you and equipping you to live your lives before his eyes in such a way that it's just pleasing to him. We want to go to him in prayer today and ask him to bless our study time together. Heavenly Father, we do bless you. We thank you for your word. Every day we have the opportunity to look into it. And it's exciting to know that the God of the universe designed it so that we could learn from these scriptures. And as we study this book of Philippians again, I pray that you will open our hearts and minds, our eyes and ears to receive from you, and that you will be blessed by what we learn and apply in our lives. Guide us by your Holy Spirit into the truth, we pray, and equip us to live according to the truth by the same. And we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is Peace Passing All Understanding. It's taken from the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. As Paul the Apostle wrote to the church located in Philippi, he gave them several instructions concerning their daily living. One of them pertained to when they would be careful or anxious about circumstances or situations. When times of worry came, they were to pray, make supplication, be thankful, and let their requests be made known unto God. And in chapter 4 and verse 7 of his letter to the Philippians, Paul shares about the peace of God that comes as a result of following his words. He wrote, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The verse begins, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, As a continuum to his guidance for worry, Paul tells the Philippians the peace of God is the result of praying, making supplication, being thankful, and letting him know their requests. The peace of God is a state of national tranquility or personal tranquility that is exempt from the rage and havoc of war. It's peace between individuals. That is harmony concord, security, safety, prosperity, and felicity. And in this case, it refers to the inward state of an individual. This peace passes all understanding, which means rises above, stands beyond, or distances itself from the mind, judging, determining, the intellectual faculty, and thinking. Where most people are troubled within because of their situations, The person who receives the peace of God is quiet and calm inside. The verse continues, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When a person receives the peace of God, Paul says it will keep your hearts, which means will guard the middle or central or innermost part of anything. The heart essentially refers to the seat of emotions within a person. And when the peace of God is there, there is calm. Paul adds, and minds, which is the mental perception, that which one thinks, the mind, thoughts, or purposes. Even the very thoughts of a person who pours out his or her heart toward God when they are anxious have access through Christ Jesus to have peace within their lives. As we ponder Paul's words, let us notice that he says, peace of God, which is quite different different from peace with God. When we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, we enjoy peace with God. Until then, we are in effect not at peace with the Almighty, and our lives are not in alignment with Him. As soon as we accept God's provision of salvation through His Son Jesus, we no longer are enmity against Him, but have made peace with Him. However, this is different than having the peace of God. We may have peace with God because we believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins, rose from the dead the third day, provided eternal life through his sacrifice, and yet still be worried, anxious, and full of care within. In other words, there is no peace in our emotions or thinking. We might be troubled on every side if we follow Paul's prescription for when we have times of doubt and worry. The promise to the Philippians and to us is that the peace of of God will come in. Our lack of worry may even be interpreted by others as lack of care because our peace passes all understanding. 
God desires for us to rely upon his abilities to handle situations and circumstances that are beyond our capacity to change or repair. And when we cast our cares upon him, his peace invades our souls and penetrates our thinking. If we want to be at rest within, let us learn daily to rely upon him and may the peace of God fill our hearts and minds. Next time, Paul tells the Philippians what to think upon. So read ahead and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word. In Jesus' name.